Well, hello, welcome back to the TL3 Cabins down here in Southern Ohio. Got a few things to do down here, spending a couple days. Uh, things were a flurry of activity a couple weeks ago. We had some uh, trails to clear out. We tested out the new UTV. We brought JD down and even got JD up on top of the Widowmaker. So come on, check out, see what's going on down here in Southern Ohio. There's always a lot of setup and unloading when I first get here. It takes a little bit of time opening up the cabin and everything. And I want to get this prep for a campfire later on this evening. I might go hunting this evening and when I get back it will be kind of dark and I'll just be able to toss a match in there and hopefully have a nice warm fire. So the last time we were here, we plugged the refrigerator in and it did not work. We let it sit for a little while, plug it back in, it still wouldn't work. We could hear just maybe a very quiet hum coming out of the back. Um, the fan wouldn't kick on and we thought the refrigerator was shot. I've had a history of some issues with refrigerators down here. Uh, apparently some of the newer ones do not like to be left in cold weather and when we leave here in the winter time, we don't heat the place, we shut everything down, we unplug the refrigerator. And I thought that that was the case because we've probably gone through three refrigerators in about the last five years. Um, so I came here today, I brought a replacement refrigerator. It's the one my daughter had when she was in college. It's got a little freezer on there, a little fridge. I thought it'd be good just to get us through the year. And if we're gonna be leveling this place eventually, I didn't want to get carried away and replace this with either a used one or finding something like scratch and dent. So just before I decided to carry this thing out I plug it in and it sounds like it's working I got everything set up down below and I went on top of the hill for the evening just to sit up in a tree stand it's hunting but not really hunting I usually forget something it's kind of just like a practice run but I just went up there for a little while and uh, came down even before the Sun went down just to get a fire started and, and get some other projects taken care of So quick class on uh, waste disposal when you have a small cabin like this. If you're going to build a small cabin or if, um, you're going to convert something into a cabin, a big expense is waste disposal if you want to put a septic system in it. It's, it's really going to cost you a lot of money. Um, an alternative is using what is called a composting toilet. And basically everything is contained right in this unit here. You do your business. Um, when you come and go, you have a little crank here, then you crank it, then there's a revolving drum inside, and you just keep doing your business. And then every time you do your business, you add, it almost looks like, like uh, peat moss. You add a little bit of that into there, and as it starts getting full, and I probably only empty this about once a year, um, you do a reverse turn on this, and it will deposit stuff down below into another compartment and you let it sit there maybe for a couple of weeks to your next visit then you come and you just empty out that compartment out in the yard somewhere um, and it's fully compost there's no odor one issue I'm having right now though is I have a vent fan that comes up here and it goes through the roof and the fan is seized up sometimes I'll get maybe a bee's nest in there maybe an acorn will fall under just right and it's just a little fan, almost like the type that you'd have on an old computer in the back, like for your power supply. So I'm going to go up on the roof see if I can unclog it. I'm dragging the shop back up here. I got a long uh, handled rake to see if I can like uh, loosen anything in there and then vacuum it out. Hard to say if I'm getting anything, so I'm going to go back down and uh, flip the switch and see if I got a freed up motor. All 
All right, let's see if that did the trick. Usually I'll turn this dial. I have it on a timer, so when you come in here, you can turn it on and let it just uh, the fan cycle for about um, 15 to 20 minutes. If you're sitting on it and you turn the fan on, which is normally what we do, you have a nice, gentle, cool breeze under your bottom. Some people find it refreshing. And let me give it a shot. Oh, it looks like we're working. I can hear the motor. I can hear the... Before it was just like a seized up motor sound. So I think we got it free and hopefully we're good for another season. Real quick, the cost of this unit is about eight to nine hundred dollars. The peat moss that you use to um, put in here comes in good sized bags, and those are about fifteen dollars a bag. Those usually last me about about one one bag a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, so it's a good alternative. I don't mind using it. If nobody's got issues with it. Um, if you're going to have a uh, a cabin that's going to have a lot of traffic and a lot of people. Well, then they do make alternatives to this where you can get bigger models, some that actually have a, a uh, look like a toilet itself, and then it'll go down below into a large unit that will compost everything. And we're actually thinking about maybe using that if we rebuild this place. Heading on top of the hill to take care of another little project. I think I have some deer that uh, figured out how to get food out of the feeder and they overindulge a bit. We put about 150 pounds of corn in this about 12, 13 days ago, and it's almost empty. It should have lasted about 75 days. And I've seen this happen before. We'll get a inquisitive deer or maybe a raccoon. Most of the time it's a deer. And usually, for some reason, it's always like a little button buck that figures this out. But they take their thin little tongue and they just start working this little spinner. And before you know it, they can figure out they can get corn out of here. So I need to figure a way to block this up and keep them from getting in there. Some of our older feeders were very tall and it was hard for them to reach, but it was also hard to fill up. So you'd have to stand on top of the ATV and dump your corn in, but it was too high for them to reach. These lower ones are nice because I could just reach in here and fill it up. Now we use feeders around here because um, our property's hilly. We don't have like any farm fields nearby. And to get us to increase the traffic of deer through here, um, we place one or two feeders throughout our property, and it just increases traffic coming through here. It's not going to make like a full meal for them, but they know they can maybe stop here. And we just know that there's certain places that they like to sleep at night, certain places they like to eat it. And this is just like a little pit stop for them. So it gets them onto our property where we don't have to create food plots, make nice little fields, and create a big expense. It's economical. You know, these run about 70 to $80, depending. Uh, you can get a little bit carried away and go up to a couple hundred dollars. I find that um, after time, these things just start wearing out. The plastic starts giving out, um, or the motor itself just gives out from being in the weather all the time. So I usually use the Moultrie feeders. Like I said, they're about $80. A lot of times I get gift cards for Christmas, and I can pick one of these up. Corn is generally around five to six dollars for fifty pounds, so somewhere around eleven to twelve dollars for hundred pounds. And if you set the timers just right, I just have it set twice a day to disperse one pound, once in the morning, once in the evening. Um, you could pick up the seven or eight different times of the day that you wanted to throw out some corn, but um, like I said, I just want to bring a little traffic through here. 
So you'd be surprised it brings in turkeys, even though we don't hunt for turkeys. Um, just all kinds of uh, animals that will come through here if we have a trail camera set up. A little history about that. Now I got to figure a way to um, stop them from getting in there. I'm on top of the Widowmaker right now. I've made several trips and it's worked out very well. I haven't had any inclement weather yet where the hill's starting to get muddy or maybe a little bit slick from the snow, but we'll have to wait till further in the year for that. One thing I have noticed with this Polaris UTV compared to my other ATV is that um, going up the Widowmaker was very important to me to get up here and it works great for that. But also getting down the Widowmaker is a bit of a challenge too. And with my old ATV, if I put it in low gear, that was basically like an engine brake. It would pretty much just creep down the hill very slow. And if I gave it a little gas, it'd speed up. But um, basically, I just had to steer and use the brake very little. Um, with this, when you take your foot off the gas and you put it in low, it's almost like being in neutral, which was kind of scary at first. So you are using the brake the whole time going down the hill. Now, I don't completely understand it, but from what I have read is that the drive belt is basically on a clutch that operates with centrifugal force. And when it's spinning and you're giving some RPNs to the engine, the belt grabs and it's technically in gear. When the RPMs slow down, the belt loosens and it feels like you're in neutral, even though you're still in gear. So I've read a few things about some older models and I am going to give it a try, but basically you ride the brake a little bit and you give it some gas at the same time. So you use both feet on the pedals and this keeps it engaged in low gear and you don't have to use the brake as much, but it is a little precarious. And let me give you an example here. <laughs> What I'm going to do here is go into low gear and I'm going to go down a little bit of an incline here. It's, it's not nothing nowhere near the Widowmaker, but as I'm in low right now, I can definitely tell you're in low when you're accelerating. And I want you to listen to the pitch, the change, when I let off the gas and I'm on a slight incline. And I'm going to let off and the RPMs slow down. because I thought it'd be easier to work on it down here because you, you never bring enough tools with you up there and there's something you always got to run back down to get so it was easier to get these I tipped over the feeders so I didn't lose whatever corn was in there and I found these I took them off of an old feeder and I'm thinking that I can somehow get that in there maybe it'll keep their little tongues out of there looks a little crude but I hope it does the trick. You still have to allow for the corn to fly out so you can't completely block the openings up so hopefully this is going to help.
Coming down here sometimes seems like a chore. You know, it's another place to take care of, a lot of maintenance. But uh, there are times where it's very rewarding, very relaxing, and you just kind of get away from it all. I got a lot of odds and ends completed in the last couple days I've been here. Got to take the UTV out quite a bit and get the hang of it a little bit more. Um, did some uh, minor repairs. Tomorrow I'm going to try to head out early, so I'm going to enjoy this fire. Wait for the stars to come out. Last night was beautiful. I saw a couple shooting stars and uh, a lot of planets were out. So I appreciate everybody watching these videos. Hope you subscribe and keep an eye on it.